autotrophs capture the energy present in sunlight and convert it into chemical energy. This energy supports all the activities of the living world. From the autotrophs, the energy through the food chain goes to the heterotrophs. So, when one form of energy is changed to another, some energy is lost to the environment in forms such as solid waste, movement energy, and heat energy, which cannot be used again. Therefore, only a small amount of energy is transferred to the next trophic level. So what is the amount of energy that is transferred from one trophic level to the next? The green plants in a terrestrial ecosystem capture about 1% of the energy of sunlight that falls on their leaves and converts it into food energy. When these green plants are eaten by primary consumers, a great deal of energy is lost as heat to the environment. Some amount goes into digestion and in work, and the rest goes towards growth and reproduction. An average of 10% of the food eaten is turned into its own body and made available for the next level of consumers. Therefore, 10% can be taken as the average value for the amount of organic matter that reaches the next level of consumers. With only 10% of energy reaching the next level, isn't it difficult to manage the ecosystem? Well, it certainly limits the number of trophic levels in a food chain. There are generally a greater number of individuals at the lower trophic levels of an ecosystem. The length and the complexity of food chains vary greatly. Each organism is generally eaten by two or more other kinds of organisms, which in turn are eaten by several other organisms. This is something like the plants and fruits eaten by goats, cows, rats, and rabbits. And subsequently, rats being eaten by owls or snakes or cats. That's right. Instead of a straight line food chain, the relationship can be shown as a series of branching lines called a food web. Did you know that unknowingly, harmful chemicals can enter your body through the food chain? Oh. One of the reasons is the use of several pesticides and other chemicals to protect crops from diseases and pests. These chemicals are either washed down into the soil or into water bodies. These are absorbed from the soil by the plants along with water and minerals and these are taken up by aquatic plants and animals from water bodies. This is one of the ways in which they enter the food chain. Why isn't anything being done about it? As these chemicals are not degradable, these get accumulated progressively at each trophic level. As human beings occupy the top level in any food chain, the maximum concentration of these chemicals gets accumulated in your body. This phenomenon is known as biological magnification. Does this mean that my body is affected too? You are concerned with the chemicals entering your body, but not worried about the environment? You have been polluting the air, causing deforestation and acid rains, thereby not only endangering me, and other living organisms, but also yourselves. This is why food grains such as wheat and rice, vegetables and fruits, and even meat, contain varying amounts of pesticide residues. These residues
interviews cannot always